So as we covered in the last video, and I'm sure you are all very well aware, stocks are down and growth stocks specifically are down bad. Now, in a lot of cases, this drop will be justified, but in other cases, it may have presented a much needed buying opportunity for the value seeking investors like myself and all of you. So today, we're gonna to look at one of the stocks that has struggled the past few months and has dropped over 35% from its 2021 high. That stock is Tattooed Chef. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with Tattooed Chef, they're a food company that sells plant-based frozen foods. It has a portfolio of different products that range from cauliflower-based pizzas, uh, mac and cheese, zucchini spirals and smoothie bowls, uh, as well as many others. They also recently announced they will begin offering plant-based meat alternatives sometime in the near future, which will start with plant-based pepperoni and plant-based sausages. These items closely resemble the taste and texture of meat, but of course aren't, and they're made with real food ingredients and are gluten-free. Now, with all this in mind, Tattooed Chef's aim as a business is to offer consumers a higher quality selection in the freezer aisle, not just be a replacement to a meat or animal protein uh, like one of its main competitors or alternatives beyond meat because these two are compared quite frequently but they have slightly different product ranges and aims as a business. And now to give you some background on the value proposition or gap in the market that this company is trying to fill, you know, why do they exist? After all, they are a very small company still with less than 200 million in revenues and a market cap of around 1.4 billion but they're serving and planning to build a dominating position in a sector that is valued at $21 billion as of 2020. And that sector being plant-based foods is expected to reach $38 billion by 2025. So there's lots of room to grow given the existing demand that is already there. And they're taking full advantage of the secular trend in consumer behavior where people are becoming more and more aware of the major health benefits of eating healthy plant-based foods and the environmental impacts of not eating animals. I will disclose at this point that I am not vegan or vegetarian, but this is a trend that I can appreciate and see continuing into the future. So now that we know the market opportunity is there for them and consumer demand is shifting towards healthy uh, non-meat alternatives, let's explore how likely Tattooed Chef is to capture that demand. Because after all, this is a food company and a growing sector, which means if the product isn't good, Growth will only last as long as the story. And if the sector becomes increasingly attractive, then you will see a more competitive landscape than already exists. So it's important they have a sticky product to consumers and consumers keep wanting more of it. So we want to see proof of that in Tattooed Chef having a good range of products and not just appealing to one particular taste. Uh, secondly, that the quality is good and this should be either through repeat sales and consumer feedback maybe. And then lastly, that they have adequate distribution channels set up to reach the right number of customers and continuing to reach new customers. So firstly, if we look at the product range, the product range looks good in terms of choices and not appealing to one specific taste. As of 2020, they had 38 different products to choose from and they're hoping to expand that to around 62 by the end of this year. So that's good enough number for me. That's appealing to a wide variety of tastes, not just one specifically. And although I wouldn't be surprised if in the later future, you start to see a smaller range than they have now as fan favorites are focused on more than the others. Secondly, let's try and determine then the quality of this product without filling our stomachs. So the pizza here on Sam's Club, one of the main retailers, has almost a five-star review, 4.7, which is not bad. And then we can see some of the others on here on Target's website, they have five stars. So customer feedback is very positive, at least to start with now. Now, another way of looking uh, is through their sales numbers. At the end of the day, sales numbers won't lie. And we can see this quarter, they had a record sales number in their Tattoo Chef branded products, which was their fastest growing segment of the business. This tells us something about the demand that exists for Tattooed Chef's products and the Tattooed Chef brand, that customers have recognized their brand as one of quality and are happy to pay for it and continue paying for it. Also, their distribution partners or retailers are obviously selling out very quickly and wanting to restock their shelves very quickly too, leading to more sales for Tattooed Chef. So for me, that is proof in the numbers, in not just reviews, but also in their sales amounts. Now, lastly on this segment, they definitely do have a great distribution channel set up. Their main partners are Costco, 
Walmart, Sam's Club, Target, and Bristol Farms. And as of 2020, they had 4,272 stores globally selling their products and are targeting to increase that to 10,000 stores in 2020 this year. That's 134% growth in distribution in just one year. A very good sign and will no doubt help fuel future growth of the business. And just before we get into the financials of the business and what the future may hold for Tattooed Chef, I want to add another pillar of importance to Tattooed Chef's growth strategy. And this more or less comes from the management and its acquisitions. Now, management have already said that they would like to become a, a consolidator in this space, as there's a lot of smaller companies that exist in this niche market uh, that would benefit from synergies that a business like Tattooed Chef can offer. But it would also provide clear benefits to Tattooed Chef, given they're willing to actually pay the price to buy out the company and they can get a reasonable price for those companies. And acquisitions can obviously be a powerful method of growth but they can also present risk in terms of overpaying, like I say, but also not being able to integrate the businesses in an efficient way or as originally planned. But I think this is the right thing for Tattoo Chef to focus on, so long as it's not the main method of growth. We want to see organic growth from this company as well. But as an example, they recently announced the acquisition of Foods of New Mexico for $35 million cash, a company that produces ready-to-eat Mexican-style food, so they mix in with the core business quite well. I feel that the acquisition is just as much about increasing operational capacity, though, as it is spotting an opportunity in the Mexican food market, as they're requiring all of their factories and production sites, and the CEO has gone so far to say that off of this small $35 million acquisition, they believe Foods of New Mexico can contribute up to $200 million of revenue annually in the next two to three years and create significant value for all our stakeholders. So that's a very big statement, a huge return on investment if they really can find the efficiencies to create $200 million of revenue just off of that $35 million investment. If that's true, by 2023, we'd see a 6x return on the acquisition, which is really incredible. And revenue should be in addition to the organic growth that they're seeing in the current business. And now the last thing I want to talk about just to tie this all in is the management of the company. All right, it is sort of a family business to an extent. You've got Sam Galetti uh, and Sarah Galetti as the CEO and creative director. Now, Sam does have some very good experience in this field. He's got 35 years experience in the food industry uh, and has served as a CEO of a $500 million revenue uh, food company in the past. So he's well equipped to take a company like Tattooed Chef from where it is now to probably where it needs to be in the next few years. You've also got Sarah Galetti, who was the person behind the Tattooed Chef brand, all right? The creative person who thought, we can take this company to the next level by becoming the Tattooed Chef. And look what it's done for the company. So I do think they are in very good hands in that respect. We did have a little bit of controversy very recently with the CFO resigning with immediate effect. Uh, we don't know what the reasons for that were, but... What I do know is at the same period in time, Sam Galetti had to release a load of shares at around $10 per share, so the original SPAC price to some warrant holders uh, of the stock. And when it went to vote for the board, I think the CFO was the only one against it. So that may have been uh, some context to what happened, but you can look that up. To be honest with you, I don't think it's a huge uh, concern for me. I think the company is in good hands in terms of its leadership, and it's good to see that Sam Galetti and his family will continue owning 50% of the business as time goes on, so they've got significant skin in the game. Now, turning to the financials, as I said, very small company, pretty close to a startup. As you can see, 47 million all the way up to 150 million as of 2020. But we do have some punchy growth there. That's a 77% compound annual growth rate, albeit only over two years. One element that I think people struggle with, uh, Tattooed Chef and likewise companies in this field, is the capital intensity or low gross margin. So we can see here, although they've improved their gross margins from 7 to 16%, more through uh, Tattooed Chef branded sales and anything that's what's driving that gross margin up and some operational efficiencies as they grow. It's still a low gross margin business with not much room for profit, although they have managed to be profitable this year. 16% gross margins. We're going to hope that that does increase over time. They have given guidance and said that this should increase or has a potential to increase to around 35% in later years should they build up more operational efficiencies and branded sales lead the way in terms of revenue. 
And now speaking of guidance, of course, this company here, or Tattooed Chef, it went public through a SPAC merger. So actually talking on that point, that could be a reason why the stock is maybe struggling at the moment. Of course, all SPACs have gone through a fairly bad stage in terms of the stock price performance over the past few months. It sort of had that SPAC effect. So that could be a reason you know, for the struggles in the past few months. But the main point on that is that they gave guidance uh, in their SPAC merger to tell us how quickly this company can reach a billion dollars in revenue. That was the main talking point. How quickly can they get there? And they've said in their guidance that they think they can get to a billion of revenue, profitable revenue by 2026, gross margins at around 35% or more, and then adjusted EBITDA being 20% of sales. So this is a really big improvement from where they are now as a company. And by their narrative, they're saying that this should all be organic, all organic growth, because they've got cash on hand that's going to be put in uh, for those strategic opportunities in growing the business organically. And then all of this guidance here doesn't include any acquisitions. So like the one we've seen recently where they think they'll add 200 million of revenue in the next three, two to three years, they haven't added that into the guidance. So there is some upside in this guidance. And they did just release quarterly results as well. So if we track that against, you know, how well they did versus how well they said they was going to do, um, revenue increased around 60% in the first quarter, gross margins were around 16%, slightly lower than expected. But they kept their outlook for the full year 2021, saying they expect to reach around 240 million in revenue for the year compared to 220 million in their original guidance. They also see 20 million of revenue contributed through the uh, Foods of New Mexico acquisition. So getting an almost immediate return on that investment, which is fantastic to see. Gross margins I expect to be in the range of 20 to 25% and then adjusted EBITDA around two to four million. Now, if we put that in to our forecast, we go back into that. We can see for 2021, uh, I've given them a revenue amount of around 240 million at a 24% gross margin, which is what analysts are expecting and what they've expected. EBITDA, I've kept at their guidance of only 5 million as well. Uh, and then for the years following on from that, I've pretty much gone with their guidance just to, to screen the outcomes um, of what it could be. I've gone just under their guidance. Obviously, they said 2026, they should be able to achieve 1 billion uh, of revenue, 20% adjusted EBITDA margin. Remember, that's not uh, pure EBITDA, that's adjusted. So they'll be taking out things like uh, stock-based compensation or any non-recurring items. Uh, so we've got to think about that. That's an adjusted number, not a pure EBITDA number. 35% gross margin. So I've gone just under the bar for that for 2025. Basically got them growing to 886 million in revenue in around four and a half years from now. EBITDA at 15%, so slightly lower than their adjusted target. That gives us 133 million of EBITDA, so not a huge amount. Assuming their TAM uh, is 30 to 38 billion, which is the estimate for 2025 for the uh, frozen foods market, that would only be a market share of 2.6%. So you would imagine that there is a lot of room for them to outperform that number up here. Um, if we look at what I've done in terms of the actual DCF valuation, I've gone with a 25% EV to EBITDA multiple. All right, so a very conservative multiple. And also for our DCF calculation, I'm not taking any free cash flow throughout the period because I don't know, you know where the free cash flow is going to land. Obviously, they're going to have to spend a lot on capital expenditure uh, because of the way that the company's built. They're a vertically integrated company and in they manufacture everything or they produce everything. They farm all of the products. They deal with everything from farming to distribution to packaging and things like that. So there's going to be a lot of CapEx involved. So I'm just taking the multiple number, all right, how much the business will be valued at at the end of the period. And I'm going to discount that back the four and a half, five years to today to give us a fair value uh, just based off of how much it will be worth in four to five years. So 25 times is the multiple I've gone for. Um, that gives us a fair value today of $19.75 per share or an intrinsic value of $1.6 billion. And that's off a fairly high discount rate of 15%, which means that the company is actually fairly valued at the moment, which is you know good to see. After the dip, that 35% dip, we have now come into fair value territory. But do remember, this is all based on uh, whether they can achieve their guidance. I tend to think they probably can achieve their guidance, especially given that all of this guidance is, is organic growth or expected to be organic growth. They've already come out and said that they could add 200 million 
of revenue based off that acquisition of uh, New Mexico food. They think they could add around 200 million to this number here or this number here in two to three years. Now that would mean that we're way ahead of guidance by 2023. We're near the region uh, of 700 million by that point. So I do think there's a lot of room to outperform, especially when you look at how big the market's going to be and that their market share would be relatively small compared to how much brand recognition they have and the distributors in which they use. But there are uh, some elements that will drive the fair value down. Of course, one of them is always share dilution. So this is a company that wants to acquire businesses. They have 132 million of cash on their balance sheet uh, as of today, which is a healthy amount, all right, if they want to be buying smaller businesses uh, like the ones that they have recently for 35 million. But as they start to get larger and maybe these acquisitions start to cost more and more, they may want to raise shares outstanding or take on debt. But I'd, I'd assume with the market cap they've got, it will be raising uh, shares and that will dilute shareholders. So if we say even 2% per year, that's going to bring us right down to fair value with no margin of safety. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that this valuation here or this forecast here does have some variables that will affect the fair value. But it is good to see that after the recent sell-off, this could be an opportunity to buy tattooed chef stock if you are looking to get in a reasonable price. Now, another company or stock that I'm going to be looking at that was brought up on the Discord um, earlier on this week is HelloFresh, right? a very similar company, although they trade uh, in Germany on the Germany exchange. They have slightly you know, more impressive numbers, I'd say, than Tattooed Chef. They run a subscription model of uh, healthy prepared meals. And you know, the economics of their business do look a lot better than the Tattooed Chef. And they appeal to uh, a similar customer. And also the stock price looks a lot more fairly valued. So I'm going to be looking at them as well. I'll be doing a valuation on the Patreon for those. I don't know if I'll post it on YouTube, but if you want to go ahead and check that out when I do that and then check out this valuation so you can plug in any of your own assumptions, then go ahead and check out the Patreon page uh, and the Discord and it will be available on there as well as many other benefits. Now that's about it for the Tattooed Chef guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was an insight into what the Tattooed Chef does and how fairly valued the stock price is after the recent drop. I'm going to continue looking at some of these growth companies that have been affected over the past uh, few weeks and couple of months and see if we can cover some more that have uh, created a buying opportunity as of the most recent market sell-off. So leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and some more videos coming out this week. Comment down below, let me know what you think of the Tattooed Chef and whether you think it's a good buy at the moment. Um, like I said, go and check out the Patreon if you want access to this valuation and many more. I'll see you all in the next video. Good luck with all of your investments.